This video is designed to share a little bit about developing pieces in the game of chess. Um, developing pieces is a very important concept, and so what I'd like to do is just show you a couple of scenarios in the very first moves in a chess game that show you a good and bad developing of pieces. So uh, the goal in the beginning is, is really to try to activate or um, develop as many of your pieces as you can or create advantages of for yourself and oftentimes that's by uh, getting multiple pieces active right away. So uh, I'm going to show you an example here of <laughs> what I see a lot when I first sit down to play against uh, people that are just learning how to play chess or maybe when I'm, I'm, I'm uh, coaching or teaching uh, some elementary kids and and uh, a lot of times here's how they start. I'll, I'll play something like e4 and then they'll play h5, pawn to h5 and and uh, I know what's coming right away is they have this concept in their mind of getting their rook out to attack right away. So I just want to show you uh, why the whole, you know, get your rooks out early is not always a good idea, and it has to do with uh, peace development. Um, and so I'd play something like bishop c4, and then uh, my student would play rook h6, and and it, a lot of times they'll pull the rooks out on both sides, but the main idea here is I just want to show you after these two moves for each player, I want to show you how um, the white pieces already has an advantage in this game, and uh, I want you to know why. So uh, just take a look at what pieces, the, or I should say what squares the white pieces are controlling or attacking. So let's look at the pawn. Uh, we'll look at this pawn right here on e4. It's important to note that that pawn, now it can move forward, but let's look at what it's attacking. It's attacking uh, both squares that are diagonal to it. So it really, I, I would say, it controls those two, those two squares because it's attacking those two, if you will, or it has power on those two. And now, if you look at the bishop, the white bishop, it is controlling or attacking, really, these open squares on the board. So as I kind of look at what squares white is controlling, I'll, hi I'll highlight those in green here. Um, whoops, not that one. It's controlling really these squares on the board with its current pieces that it has moved. Uh, and note that that's quite a few of the central squares. Now I know that the the knights, uh, the white knights haven't moved, so they're technically holding on to some squares. Uh, the white knight on g1 technically is holding this square and this square, I understand that. And the white knight on b1 is controlling this square and this square. And of course the pawns are all controlling squares too, but but look at the power of the white pieces right now and how much of the board, especially towards the center, that they are attacking and controlling. They kind of have rule or power over it. And on the contrary, uh, take a look at the black pieces. Now the black pieces have moved two, two pieces, just like the white pieces. Each person has been allowed to move two pieces. And the black pieces, taking a look at this, is its pawn, the black pawn, on uh, each five, this pawn right here, uh, is controlling that square, and only that square, by the way. Yes, it can move forward, but that's the only square it's attacking. And then when you look at the rook, the rook is kind of trapped in here. The pawn's blocking it, but the rook can control that, that, uh, that line there. Okay, it controls this one right there. Now, it also controls, I guess, the squares behind it. But looking at, like, what people are controlling, and I'll, and I'll turn all the rook squares black, and I guess if I have overlap, maybe, um, let's see, I'll turn those yellow. Yellow means they both control it, I guess, or they both are attacking. And then we've got these two. But when you look at kind of the power on the board, the black pieces do not have a lot of control, while the white pieces are controlling a lot of squares. And so I just wanted to show you that that one example, that's one scenario, so that you realize that, you know, you want pieces to attack. You want pieces out there active, involved, not just kind of sitting back and not doing a whole lot. Now, another uh, classic, uh, I guess, strategy, I don't know if it's a strategy to say per se, but another thing to keep in mind when you start a chess game, I'm going to reset the board here and look at a different game, um, is one general thumb is you, 
in in general you don't want to move the same piece multiple times now I'm gonna make this a little bit drastic just to kind of prove my point but let's say I'm, I'm wh the white pieces and I play pawn to d4 and uh, the black pieces plays knight to f6 and I decide to, you know I don't wanna I wanna control stuff in the middle of the board I wanna develop pieces and become active I want all my pieces to attack so I'm gonna play my bishop out here and the, my opponent decides to move their knight again and so they move their knight alright and now it's my turn and I will move my knight out now I've noticed as white I'm not moving the same piece twice uh, black I'm making them move the same piece multiple times just simply to kind of prove the point here but already now black needs to have a fair turn so I guess I can't cheat them here and I'm just I'm gonna have them play their knight again so their their knight plays to d6 now Yes, they moved the same piece three times, but I just want to prove a point on this one. Um, now if I were to look at who controls what on the board, you know, we've each moved three times. Well, first of all, look at the white pieces. The white pieces have like three attackers on the board, if you will. As I should say three attackers that have come out to, to join the middle of the board. While black really just has that single knight all by itself, kind of dancing around, trying to figure out where it wants to go, and things like that. So, when you look at the white pieces, and I look at the pieces or the squares that are controlled there again, this pawn is controlling two squares, so it's controlling that square and that square. The uh, bishop is controlling really the same square, and it is attacking the knight also, but it's controlling these squares out here it's also controlling the one behind it so I'll highlight these squares We've, white has pieces kinda controlling these squares or, or attacking on those squares uh, the white knight is covering two of the bishop squares but then it'll also attack on uh, one over here and of course it could play back if it wanted to uh, but white is controlling these squares uh, in contrast to that black knight, that black knight is only controlling this square, and this square, and this square, and this square. Remember, the knight moves like that L-shape, and it's controlling those four squares. So, yeah, it's great that the knight is out there, but uh, that the, the white pieces are really, really... Uh, they just have more options. They have more power towards the center, and more of them. More, more of their army, I guess, whatever you want to call it. So another rule of thumb is try not to move the same piece multiple times unless you have to or unless of course there's a, a significant advantage in doing so. It's just kind of a general rule of thumb not to move the same piece multiple times. And I want to show you one last scenario and that, and that has to do with or I kind of want to talk through uh, the main idea here in the beginning of a chess game is to activate as many pieces as you can and do it as fast as you can and so uh, the two most common moves generally speaking for the white pieces to open with is either to play uh, the e pawn e4 pawn e4 or to play the d pawn uh, pawn to d4 those are kind of the two most common openings that you would find and I really want to talk about uh, why they do that. Uh, you've got to realize that if you play pawn to e4, um, understand how many pieces have been activated. Uh, the number of pieces that have been activated once I play pawn e4, just watch now. Let's see, what pieces for white can now move in the game? Well, there's this bishop on f1 that can come out and play anywhere it wants to along that diagonal. There's the queen on d1 that can come out and play anywhere on that diagonal. We've opened up the diagonals for those two pieces by playing that one pawn. Now at the same time, our knights could come out if they'd like to. The knight on g1 can come out, or the knight on b1 can come out. And so what we've done by moving that pawn forward is we've created a situation where we've we've allowed our pieces to have options more options or the potential to come join the attack out in the center of the board things like that now that's the whole idea in trying to um, trying to develop pieces now if I were to move a different piece and now uh, the computer's gonna kinda might yell at me here as opposed to let's say I move um, my f pawn now it's a little bit of a joke with my chess club here uh, it, I, I say joke but it's not really I mean I've got uh, some people play pawn f4 
uh, that pawn move right there. Uh, it is technically an opening in chess. It's called the bird's opening. Uh, and I'm just I'm going to play it here right now. It's going computer's going to ask me if I really want to do that. Um, now, I would say in the whole grand scheme of things, as far as the concept of activate your pieces as quickly as you can, uh, that might not be quite as strong of a move because if looking at my bishops, my bishops are both trapped in here still. Looking at my knights, yeah, my knights can both come out. Um, that that's you know, knight can play out, knight can play out. But when you look at the bishops, the bishops are kind of trapped inside here. They can't play anywhere. They can't play the other direction. They're kind of stuck. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I've said, um, I actually honestly do play the bird's opening, which is this pawn to f4. But as a beginning player, a beginner player, I wouldn't recommend it simply because it it it's not allowing for that quicker development of pieces in a sense, and it, and it creates some weaknesses that. Uh, that you would need to learn about uh, later as you know more about chess. So the idea is activate your pieces. Try to get out your knights and bishops as quickly as possible. Castle early if you can in a beginner, in more of a beginner level I would say castle early, castle often. Uh, upper level chess I understand that may not be the case but uh, keeping in mind you want to get pieces active. You want pieces to play the game. You don't want all your pieces to sit back on the back row, back rank, and just not do anything. You want them in the game. So, think of that when you talk about, when we when you look at developing pieces, activate your pieces. Um, the whole bring the rooks out early is not of technically a good strategy. I've kind of shown you the general idea there. And, uh, and just get, get those knights and bishops out there. They want to be involved in the game. 